from Thomas Jefferson's memorial across industrial America, from sea to no longer shining sea, it's time to stand up and be counted. Dennis Hayes was the organizer of Earth Day. There were literally hundreds of projects that were embarked upon around the country that, that were anything from trying to save prairie grasses in the Midwest that were being uh, covered over with housing developments and other developments and were disappearing forever, to a, a lot of focus upon parklands and upon uh, marshes and wetlands around the country. Earth Day is a smash. It's reported that on April 22nd, 30 million Americans demonstrate for a clean environment. There is no violence, there are no injuries, there are virtually no arrests, but there is anger. You are lucky that you are breathing probably the last of the oxygen. New York City bans cars on Fifth Avenue for two hours and tens of thousands march. On this day, pollution has no friends. There was a sense of exhilaration that was just incredible. One of the reporters came up and said, do you realize this is the largest demonstration that has ever happened any place in the world in the course of human history? And we all felt, I suppose in some sense, a, a sense of achievement, but more than that, a, a sense of exhilaration that we had really touched something that was, that was capable of moving America. Saving the Earth seemed a fine notion, if a chancy one. That same month, saving the Earthmen seemed even chancier. Lost in space was a real possibility. Come back to the spring of 1970 for the appalling Apollo adventure. In the technological revolution that is taking place in the spring of 1970, there are two questions to ask. Will man control machine, or will machine control man? For four days in April, the answer to both questions is yes. The space program has settled into predictable success in the spring of 70. Two sets of astronauts have strolled on the moon, and another is ready to go. There is no inkling that the mission might fail. Three, two, one, zero. We have commit, and we have missed off at 2.13. It was our third manned mission to the moon, Apollo 13, and no one paid any particular attention to the flight's unlucky number. At first, in that spring of 1970, this was the most advanced, most complicated machine man had ever built. It came in three parts, or modules. The command module, named Odyssey. The home for the astronauts. Its job is to get the astronauts to the moon and back. The service module. It houses the powerful rocket to change course, and it carries the supplies and power for the round trip. The lunar module, or LIM, named Aquarius. Its job is to take the astronauts to the moon's surface. That's all, no problem, so far. Okay, Houston, we've had a problem here. This is Houston, say again, please. Houston, oh, Houston, we've had a problem. Here is a bulletin from ABC News. The Apollo 13 spacecraft has had a serious power supply malfunction that could cause the lunar landing mission to be terminated early. One of the service module's two oxygen tanks has exploded. The side of the service module blows off. Jim Lovell is the commander. There was doubt in our minds uh, exactly what caused the noise. Fred Hayes is the lunar module pilot. All I really thought was this is not normal and it may be something very bad. And it looks to me, looking out the uh, hatch, that we are venting something. Or, uh, we are venting something out uh, into the uh, into space. We're losing oxygen from our second and last bottle. Are you satisfied that both of these tanks are going down and we're past helping them, even with batteries? The explosion has destroyed the power supply to the command module, and it starts to die, slowly. The lunar module has some supplies and its own battery power but is not designed ever to return to Earth. The only way to get home was to use the uh, lunar module as a lifeboat. The astronauts are now 200,000 miles from Earth. They can't turn around, so they have to keep going towards the moon, hoping to use its gravitational pull as a slingshot to shoot them back to Earth. The command module has to be abandoned. The crew moves into the lunar module turned lifeboat, where, without computers or guidance systems, they are totally dependent on mission control back on Earth. 
Earthbound controllers have to figure out how to stretch what's left of the oxygen and battery power to keep the astronauts alive. And the lunar module rocket has to save the day. It has to. This maneuver has to work. If it doesn't work, there's almost no place else to go. And as most of you are aware, there is no rescue possible in spaceflight. The change in course is successful. Apollo 13 will swing around the moon. But the lunar module, Aquarius, which was meant to be left on the moon, has only enough water, oxygen, and battery power for two days. The trip home will take four days. Houston tells the astronauts to speed up and conserve, conserve. On Tuesday, April 14th, one day after the explosion, when Apollo 13 is behind the moon, 250,000 miles from home, the astronauts fire the rockets again. It will burn three-fourths of the lunar module's remaining fuel. My attitude was one that we would do everything possible right up to the very last bit. If we bought the farm after that, well, uh, we, we, we would go out knowing that we had done everything that we could do. Ground control can do no more for now. An anxious world waits and prays. Would you like to say the Our Father for the astronauts right now? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. The astronauts are speeding toward Earth, but lonelier than ever. Communication is a sometimes thing. The radio produces more static than information. On the ground, astronaut Joe Kerwin is on the other end. What I remember mostly during the long hours of return is sitting hunched over at the console with my headset on and the volume turned all the way up. And the, the voice contact with the crew would be an occasional thing, low in volume, through a whole lot of hash and static. I'm afraid I didn't copy that, Fred. The next day, Wednesday, still 200,000 miles from home, the astronauts have turned off everything except the radio and a fan. The entire spacecraft is operating on about 400 watts of power. It's dark and it's cold. And the spacecraft is drifting. It might miss Earth entirely unless the course is corrected by hand. The astronauts have to do that twice. Thursday, April 16th. Still 150,000 miles to go. Houston prepares the astronauts for their return to the command module. But the plan is chancy. The batteries in the command module may have frozen. And even if they work, the circuits in the capsule could crack while they're warming up. Friday, April 17th. The carrier Iwo Jima arrives at the point in the Pacific where Apollo is aiming for splashdown. Two and a half hours before re-entry, Jack Swigert turns on the power in the command module and the batteries work. The Earth kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and you knew that you had limited time to accomplish all those tasks, to get everything done, because as we approached the Earth, we were going to hit that atmosphere, and you had one chance. Fred Hayes is ill, temperature well over 100, but he keeps working. The crew cuts loose the service module and for the first time sees the damage wrought by the explosion. And there's one whole side of that spacecraft missing. Is that right? Really a mess. Next, the astronauts jettison Aquarius, the faithful lunar module. It will burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. Farewell, Aquarius, and we thank you. It's not over yet. The command module might still miss the re-entry corridor. If we had, you know, somehow missed the Earth, drifted on by, uh, it was my intention that we would uh, remain alive as long as possible, uh, even though that our the hope for survival was, was, uh, uh, you know, lost, and that maybe towards the very end we all we had to do was to depressurize the spacecraft by, by opening up a vent, and uh, you know uh, we could have done ourselves in in that manner. If the angle of re-entry is too steep, the astronauts will burn up in the Earth's atmosphere like Aquarius. 